going live all right folks we are taking it live right now this is going to be our photo critique um the topic for this one was and is reflections and i am honored to have my good buddy mr man what's his name tim ingle yeah tim ingles joining us uh, as our as our guest critic, uh, we're going to be talking about all these images together with Tim's seasoned brand of tongue-in-cheek humor. Tim, for the people who don't know who Tim Engel is, who is Tim Engel? Tim Engel's um, an old photographer um, <laughs> in Sacramento that uh, refuses to adopt new technologies. and um, That's not true. Well, and won't listen to anything anymore. Yeah, that's not true. No. I mean, part of it's true. The old part is true. The old part is old true. Hundred percent. Yeah. 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 I think what, are we? We're months apart too. So we're right there. Months. Months. Yeah. 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 Months apart. Same model year. Different mileage. I think. <laughs> and same camera users for the most part, brand wise. That's right. Yeah, you're on. Uh, you're you're you've joined the Nikon crew, or I joined it, or you I rejoined it. it. I rejoined yeah. it. I was Nikon before you, and then left, and then came back. So, yeah. So yeah, yeah I'm you're, back in there. We're, we're and you're on the Z9 the though. Nikon. You're Z9. I'm. I aspire to shoot that Z9. So, right, okay. yeah, yeah. One day, one day. All right. Well, let's dive yeah, in. Thanks. So doing this. Yeah. 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 Um, let's dive into this. Thanks everybody for showing up live. Uh, go ahead and sound off in the chat if you want to say hello to Tim and give him some encouragement because he's so nervous. He's very nervous to be doing this critique. Uh, yeah, as you can see on his face. See the nervousness right there? Look at that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this was Reflections. We got a couple of submissions in here. And if you're wondering where Troy Miller is, Troy is, um, I don't know, he gave some excuse about, I don't know, he mentioned Root Canal or, I don't know, something like that. Some lame excuse. Oh, but, my know, God. He's not yeah, here. Send him, send him a number he can call to somebody who cares. I know. I mean, I gave him the world's smallest violin. Yeah. Suck it up. Suck it up. No, no, he's out doing something, so he wasn't able to, to be in here. But this is great, because I wanted to start introducing guest, so, guest critics into the, the photo critiques anyways. And Tim yeah. graciously said he would jump in today and do this. So let's do it, man. Let's dive in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And here we are. And look at Tim down there. Let me get rid of you. Okay. All right, so this was this is photo critique number 210, Reflections. First up is Karen Sweeney. She says, near absence of reality. Let's take a look. Look at that. That's cute. I mean, I like this. I like this is one of those, like, again, we always talk about printed big on the wall shots. This this one feels like yeah. it'd be right at home on the wall. And those reflections back there. Remind me of, I don't know, like Denmark or something, or maybe the painted ladies in San Francisco. I don't know. What, what do you think of this? No, I love it. It's like, and it's one of those ones that took me a second. I thought, is that upside down? Is it? No, mm -hmm. it's right. Um, no, I love it. I think the placement of the, the, the duck is great because if it had been in different spots, it wouldn't have read as well against a different color background. Mm -hmm. So in that white, it's super, super nice. And I'm sure she had you know, she worked it going across there, but this is a good selection on that. And that, you know, it's got such a painterly feel. Yeah, it definitely would be a, a nice print. You know, I'm curious, you know, I look at this shot and it does, it looks like it has, which it doesn't, and she's done it all optically, but it, it looks like it has one of those, remember those old Photoshop filters to make things look painterly i mean they're still the, still around today but it looks like it has that added but it doesn't i'm curious what are you how do you feel about those filters like those filters that add like crack allure and kind of artificial texture to images do you use those at all you know, i i think i no. no um no <laughs> that's almost, no that's it <laughs> it's just a binary um, answer I mean, no nah, i don't I, I, ne I never dove into those filters um, I think really the only filter stuff that I would use on a regular basis now are just um, kind of color presets or styles on those. But even those are a jumping off point where I'll readjust from that and then resave that as a preset. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then it becomes so, yours. 
Yeah. So the stuff that's in the Photoshop with that, I, I've never seen a need for anything I do that for that stuff. Yeah. yeah and again, Karen, it doesn't look like Karen used that on this shot, but no. uh, yeah, it, it looks, this is, this is a really good shot. It kind of brings you in. It's, it's three dimensional and yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan, Karen. Very nice. Very yeah, well done. Beautiful shot. All right. That was Karen Sweeney, near absence of reality. Uh, next up is Paolo Bossetti. And we were talking a little bit offline about this one, Tim. You, you, you really like this shot. Tell us why. Yeah. I mean, I just think it's like, there's lots of depth to this. It's like you have, you know, one, you have the red head of the, the dress and then the dark dress, which plays into the reflection and the person walking in the dress in the street. It's like, I just, I love the layers and, you know, and a great shadow on the person that's in the reflection. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot happening here that I really dig. It's kind of got, it's, you just can kind of get into it and there's more layers. Yeah. It feels like a composite, like a, like an abstract composite versus just a, those, yeah, like you know. a whole picture and a whole, yeah, a whole picture. It's like an almost masked out. It's a whole picture in a picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you do much street photography these days, Tim? You're, you're mostly out there doing you know, commercial stuff. Um, I have in the last three months probably done more than I had done in a while. Um, I was getting up and just kind of walking downtown Sacramento in the mornings mm -hmm. and, uh, and this, and I'm late to this game. This is a street photography thing, I think. But then I had turned, I was shooting Fuji GFX when I was doing it. And I turned to monochrome and then seeing in monochrome for the street photography stuff was a huge help because I was able to like get shadows and tones and highlights and, and stuff faster in the monochrome setting for me than I was leaving it in color. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. It's interesting. Yeah, the the whole the whole genre and the world of street photography is a is a whole different ilk of human that loves to go out there and it's almost like a, a hunting thing where you go out and, and just hunt yeah. for great images, bring them back post process. Um, but yeah, and hopefully come back with something like this, right? <laughs> so that's the yeah, totally. that's the plan. I love that. Yeah, yeah. This is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Paolo. Very nice. Yeah, my comments on this are, are, are very similar. Like my, I don't, I don't gravitate towards street photography, though. I kind of want to do what you talked about, Tim, kind of just go out there in the mornings and, you know, and just kind of bounce around. But yeah. the, uh, yeah, looking at this one, of course, my eye goes immediately to the red dress. And then I'm like, then I work out from there. And then I kind of move over to the reflection of the, the person walking across the street and then up to the sky. And so you just sort of take it all in, you know, and these, and like these the kind of, like go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I like the fact that the head's missing on the, the one on the right too. Mm. Mm. Yeah. 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 I look at this and like my part of my brain is like, okay, this needs to, what's the story here? You know, I always go back to that, that old trope of where is the story in the photo. And sometimes it doesn't necessarily need to be a photo or a story that's associated with the photo. I mean, there's, there may be one here, but it, it just kind of feels good with the, the way that he's executed it with the reflections and even the color combinations. These are my, this is my favorite color combination too, red and black. So yeah, very cool. Yeah. I like it. I would never wear that dress though. It would not look good on me. No, I think you're more of the dark dress. Yeah, probably. Yeah. More, more formal yeah. kind of guy. All right. Next up is Amy Brooks. Oh, Amy went abstract with this one. Rainforest impressions from Olympic National Park. Let's take a look. Look at that. Yeah, that's such a... Definitely, like, I like, the, you know, the term impressions is good. I like the... It has like you, you know, such abstract feeling to it. You're not sure necessarily what you're looking at, um, but it's like very pleasing, just kind of palette. Yeah, it feels like like these kind of shots. I mean, you could you could. I'm not exactly sure how how Amy shot this, you know, but like shooting these abstracts is that's a whole mission in and of itself. Going out with with the giving yourself a, a mission to do abstracts like say you're just walking down the street in sacramento right and you're going to do abstracts and drag the shutter and, and so you got to yeah. sort of refocus your eyes to be thinking texture and pattern and from that level versus 
pretty composition where you're going to, you know, place the subject in the rule of thirds and do all the things. It's a whole different world yeah. when you're just out there grabbing patterns and texture, right? Yeah. And I think it's very freeing just to kind of like let that go. Mm hmm. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. In backgrounds, too. Do you ever do use this? You don't do a whole lot of composite work, though, right? Your your compositing is in the studio. Yeah, not as much as I would been thinking more lately that I want to try and get more compositing done. I actually was thinking about not to deviate into this too much, but like making some AI backgrounds mm -hmm. and trying to test out those as a composite background. Yeah. Yeah. We were just watching a video on that last night where you know, it, was, it wasn't a, it wasn't, you know, the whole is AI going to kill photography type video it was more about how can photographers use AI and leverage the new power, right? And one of the things came up was that, you know, creating these one of a kind, amazing backgrounds and then compositing on top of it to complete or even foreground elements, right? To, to yeah. complete the scene and using it versus it's a tool that contributes to the overall artwork versus it being the artwork. And then you get into that whole who created it you know, argument. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I agree. That's some cool stuff. We got to talk more about that. That's a, that's an over beers conversation. We need to go sit down and talk about uh, AI and what, what's next for that. All right. You know where I live. You have my address. I do. I do. All right. Up next is Craig Stanfley, whose address is down under. He says, mirror, mirror. Or mirror, mirror. Oh, that'd be cool. If her name was Mira, that'd be interesting. <laughs> what do you think of this one? You Have you ever done it? You haven't done underwater work. I, haven't, I don't think I've ever seen I you do underwater, underwater work. commercial work hmm. for, remember that company? It was for um, HTC, the phone company. Mm -hmm. And I had mm -hmm. done their underwater action camera and I had had that whole shoot underwater. Okay. I, and I had done the, yeah, I won't get into that, but yeah. So I envy underwater because that little taste of it made me realize that it's hard. Like getting stuff you want underwater, like it's hard. And so I Yeah, it feels like a huge years. amount of, a huge amount of prep, right? And safety considerations and all the things before you even get around to the creative part, right? So yeah, yeah, I admire yeah. these these guys that can do this, like Craig and the other Craig, and you know some of the guests I've yeah. had on the show. It's just it's nuts what goes into this, and then yeah, notwithstanding the model, you got to find a model that yeah. can do this, right? And it seems like it's a lot of Craig's underwater, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I know we have problems <laughs> in our oceans. We gotta we gotta fix that. <laughs> Craig, the two the two Craig's are the underwater photographers. Yeah, it's a thing. There's no hope for us, Fred. No, but I love this. And it's like, I, 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 the hair, I love the back, like the, just the hair floating like that. And then her expression in the mirror. And it's just like the shape and the color tones. It's just so nice. Mm -hmm. um, even like, you know, just the definition of her shoulder, like holding that mirror. It's like, there's just a lot of pieces to this that are really solid. For sure. Yeah. And when you think about it, you know, like when, when Craig and or Craig say they shoot these things, they... It's like, you know, you're underwater for, you know, seconds, click, 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 yeah. go back up, collaborate with the model, go back under, click, 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 go back up, collaborate, <laughs> you know, so it's not yeah. like you're down there and take a breath. just chilling. And, go. And, and then not even any real bubbles like coming up from her. It's like, or unless he edited yeah. those out, but it's like, that's, that's cool. Yeah, that is really cool. That is really cool. Yeah, because normally you see a bubble in the mouth or in the nose, the nostril or something. Or coming out of the hair or whatever. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is exceptional. What do you think of the crop of this? So he went with a square crop with, a, with an aggressive black border on it. Do you think that adds to it? I like the square. I like a square. I mean, I love a square crop. Um, I think the border is, is nice. I think the border helps bring attention to the center, um, mm -hmm. especially looking at it on white. So I think it's definitely beneficial in that. Yeah. So, and it gives the idea of like, if I frame something like that, that's the border I would probably have on the frame. Right. No, for so, sure. I like for it. sure. Yeah. And how do you, how do you feel about just, you know, I'm curious about photographers that standardize on a certain 
sort of border treatment or aspect ratio for their work. Like Paolo, for example, he has a really cool border treatment. Let's let us let us go back to his image real quick and then we'll come back to this one. Um, yeah, this one. So Paolo, see he does, the, he typically does this black border with this orangish, like a, I don't know, it looks like a courier font on there with the title and his name. So that's, it's part of the image. It's his signature. Even the file name up here yeah, is, is burned yeah. in there. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. do you, like, doing work like this, Renee Robin does something similar, where on all of her work, she has Renee Robin photography in the image, not just in the lower left indiscreetly. It's like, like on this image, for example, Renee Robin photography would be like right here on the shot or right yeah. over here in the shot. Do you agree with that? Or what's, what's your philosophy? Well, I don't know that I agree or disagree. It's like, I don't, I, long ago, I used to do like a watermark, I guess. Um mm -hmm. And I just, I got tired of putting it on there. <laughs> and then it's like, and then, and then it's like the idea of a watermark, I think was, you know, Hey, don't steal my stuff. Cause there's a watermark on it. But then we got to a point where it's like, it's virtually like you can, somebody can take the watermark off so easily that it's like, right. So, um, and then just, and I know the frames, um, like competition, they do a lot more frames. I just, I've never gotten into them. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. You mean adding frames in post or. Yeah, yeah, no adding frames mm -hmm. in post. Um, yeah, yeah, that's you know, interesting. That's that's, that's that's it's such a full. It's a it's almost it's a. I don't know if it's controversial. It's just a stylistic choice, right? If you decide to put borders on there, and it's interesting when you hear Troy talk about it because Troy puts borders on a lot of his a lot of his work, and when yeah. he puts on his competition hat. I guess judges like things that are framed or even with irregular frames, like the sort of Polaroid look with a thicker bottom and then equidistant around the other three edges. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I just feel when I look at the frames, I mean, this is old school when I used cause I used to frame like literally frame with the exacto yeah. knife and build, cut the mats and cut my fingers and do all that stuff. And I always feel like photos look, they look finished when they have a physical mat on them with a nice yeah. border, you know, frame where they're ornate or just black. And it just feels so much more tangible and expensive. And then when I see them digitally, I can see, you know, I can get kind of get a feel for that. OK, we're trapping the image and all that, but it just doesn't feel the same. What it would be like, know. yeah. No, and I think like, like on Instagram, because the proportions are different on um the, the actual image versus the what you can post. Yeah. There's times I'll do a frame on that so you have it inset just so that I'm giving you the full image. Um, but I, you know, then yeah. it didn't decrease the size of the image. So now it's a smaller image. So it's like I'd much, I'd much rather have more real estate for me, of like the image area, mm -hmm. than framing it in and, and reducing it down. But I like yeah. that. I mean, sitting on white with Craig's, it's like, I mean, that looks great. It does. Yeah, I think it, does it wouldn't look be good. a it wouldn't be as strong on that one and it'd be fun to kind of compare the two, but it wouldn't be as, fun, as strong without that frame against the white, I think. And it's also size too, like in the physical world, if you're bringing a, a full on expensive metal print that's 20 by 24, 36 by 30 or larger, right? With a heavy yeah. black frame on it and a heavy mat and that's hanging on the wall with spotlights on it. Right. That's a whole different experience than looking at it digitally on your screen, on your phone or your laptop or something. So, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. La Duda Arena. La Duda Arena uh, in the chat says, love this composition, especially uh, as a mirror has no frame. Yeah, I agree. hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. That that totally adds to it because now you're like, it, it just adds that weird bit of of interest because you don't normally see a mirror period underwater and now we have a yeah. frameless mirror and a scantily clad mermaid under there holding it yeah yeah and then i don't think, uh, I don't think that's a mermaid she might be. i think mermaids she's... are only in the ocean i don't think they swim in pools anymore well you know if you catch one that's how you keep them alive you gotta throw it in the pool well as long as it's a saltwater pool then you're okay i found out the hard <laughs> way that way <laughs> And Jim Peters says uh, the black border definitely adds to the static feel. Yep, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. And then Nora says, "Yeah, this is my favorite." Yeah, shot. and make sure when you do that, tell the pool guy like, don't do the the, the shock treatment in the pool when the mermaids are in there because that's bad. <laughs> Yeah, keep your mermaids away from Tim Engel. Just keep them out of Sacramento all together. You'll be good. 
I right. you remember I had that. I, I could tell you a mermaid story about the Sacramento magazine assignment. Oh yeah, we'll save that for I the had... end because I'm gonna look at some of your shots too yeah. as we go through this. Uh, Eric Pronsky's up next. Eric says, um, bow reflection, a calming morning provided this reflection into the Westport, Ireland Harbor. We're looking at the Arctic Swan. Look at that. That's fine. All right. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I like it. I think the, the, to me, I, I mean, I'm into the colors. I like the blue, I like the green. It's not as strong in the reflection. Um, mm -hmm. It's more, I mean, it's almost like the study in like shape and like lines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have lines from the boat. I have the shape of the boat. I have, yeah, I have like, you know, the leading lines on the rope. Um, you know, and obviously like uh, really cool texture. Um, yeah. Yeah. I like this, Jim. My, my criticism on this one would be this, this pier, the rock here. Because this, mm -hmm. when I hold up my hand to kind of block block that out of the shot then i get it, it's all about the bows of the of the boats and the triangles yeah. of the the mooring lines and all that and i almost want to see it flipped right that'd be interesting to have it you know rotated yeah. and flipped upside down to have the reflection on the top but the this rock here takes me out of it because it, it it's well, not really adding it's a yeah it's a competition a little bit with that because it's a lighter source mm-hmm for yeah. me so it's like you have the lighter source to the left which then pulls my eye that way versus going to the where i want to go yeah and and to in his defense you know looking at this rock here compositionally maybe the idea from the artist and tell us in the chat uh, but maybe the idea from the artist was triangles right so we've got this triangle of rock here we've got the triangle making up the boats the intersection of these wires is a triangle the reflection is a triangle you know, there's a there's just a, a bunch of triangles making up the shot. Maybe that's just one more. But I agree. Even if it is, I probably would. If you're in Lightroom, I would have drawn, put a, a linear gradient or something on there and toned it down yeah. just to make it yep. less competition, make less competition with the boat or the reflection. Yep. No, I think so. So I think it's it's definitely a good study, though. It's like it's back to like learning to see and studying that stuff and finding things and. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, interesting. La Dudarina, Karen put an interesting uh, comment in there. I want to bring that up and go back to her image in a second. Uh, but this one's great. Thank you. Thank you, um, Eric Pronsky. This is awesome. Yeah, just that, that one comment about the that triangle of rock there. Um, Karen was saying, let's go back to Karen's image. And I, Karen, tell me if I'm not wrong. Let me bring your image up on screen here. Uh, there we go. Karen says, I sneak back for the comments on my shot. Thanks for the good vibes. FYI, it is upside down, hence the title. Only I a said tidy that part earlier, of the I wondered. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh, interesting. Okay, very cool. Very cool. That makes it even cooler. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for that clarification. All right. So, and Dr. Pronsky, thank you for that. And Phil Lewenthal is up next. He says, where does it end? Where does it end? Look at that. Talk about abstracts. And this, Phil knew we were going to comment on this because Phil, this is way outside of Phil's normal work because his normal work is, you know, Oceanside, sea palms, long exposure on a tripod, waves, monochromatic, yeah. all that. When he does some yeah. stellar work uh, in that field, this is like almost the polar opposite from that. It's abstract, yeah. industrial, urban, you know, all the things that are not the beach, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I like this a lot. What, yeah. what do you think? No, no, I love this one. It's like, I just, yeah, it's like, it definitely like takes me in and I just like, I'm studying it, trying to kind of like figure it out, Yeah, um, which I love. Like, I love that it's pulling me in and like, what's the reflection? What's the not? What's like... Yeah, it's a super cool shot. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I could see, like, I like the shot like this, but then imagine if in one of those window reflections there was a silhouette of a person doing something. That that would give it a little bit more scale, but, you know, uh, obviously no, completely you're, subjective. You're wrong. No, you're wrong. You're totally Am I? wrong. No? 
You're wrong. You like nothing. That? Nothing else in there, Frederick. Nothing. Just keep it clean. It's perfect like as that. is. Or you. dim all the lights. Only one. Like make it look like all the windows are off, and but one is lit. And there's a there's a silhouette of a woman in there with a glass of wine or something. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I don't know, man. No, am I reaching? No, no, no. no I'm no, kidding. But this this looks great like this. This is artwork, right? Like a hundred percent. I could see this anywhere. It would hold up. The lighting is great. I don't know how much posts he did on this, or if it looked like this when he snapped it. But I love the I love the processing and the the uh, oh the highlights the sort of patches of light. Great. Yeah, the yeah right. Yeah, it's really cool. Right. No, I love it. Yeah, I mean, I'm I, and you know, critique and I and we and I've talked in the past about critiquing for me is a funny thing because I don't know what you intended on the front end. Um, yeah. Yeah. But well, like, I, I, it's, it's subject. Well, the whole thing by definition is subjective. Right. But I think yeah. the, the way the, the way that we approach critiquing here, it's not like, Hey, you know, I have all the answers and let me give you the pearls of wisdom about your work from my infinite pool of knowledge. Right. It's more of yeah. if someone, I, I approach this, maybe Troy approaches like that, but I approach these from the standpoint of if I was just a non-photographer coming in off the street and I see this work, what would I think of it? Like where where yeah, could right. my mind go? And then I, you know, pepper in some, you know, old old photographer stuff into it, like compositional suggestions and all that. But for the most part, we're not shooting for each other, right? We're not shooting right. for other photographers. We're shooting for people that have no idea what they're looking at, but you have to please them somehow. But the, and the rules right. of photography help us do that. So that's that's the way I approach it. This one hits it. This one hits it on all the on all cylinders. Love it. Yeah, this is another one that like I could see you know a company buying for um, for a print. Mm hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, this is great. Good job, Phil. Yeah, a couple comments on Phil's from Karen says Phil's image is great needs to branch out more often an exceptional shot. I think this is my favorite shot this week. Yep. So very good. And Jim Peters pops in and says, Yes, I could stare at this for a while. And I have. Yeah, it sucks you in, doesn't yeah. it, Jim? Yep. Yeah, very cool. Yep. Very nice. All right. And then next, you got to get that, Tim? <laughs> nope. All right. Next up is Nora Zanotinus. She says, watching the clouds go by. Look at this symmetry. Look at that. That's cool. Nora always brings the heat. Always. Look at the reflection of the clouds in there. I mean, this, this hits the, the topic like square between yeah. the eyes for sure, doesn't it? No, super cool. I'm on a vacation yeah. there. Yeah, we yeah, this is this is yeah, this is really nice. It looks like you're on a on a deck of Boat? like the the Hindenburg or something. No, this is really nice there. My 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 comments on this shot is I love the symmetry. Uh I love the geometry of this shot. I even love the fact that we have the people off to the right there that give us a sense of scale. Um, and waiting on the side and it sort of breaks up the symmetry along with those plants up there. It's a, I, I love that. Without those, it would be more symmetrical, which wouldn't hurt it, but I think it, it yeah. gives more weight to it with the kind of interrupted pattern or interrupted symmetry that we have in there. Yeah. What do you think, Tim? Uh, yeah, you could have, you could have dropped that down a little bit just to have the, that center point meet, mm -hmm. you know, just mm. to kind of have it, that you know, no, no break from that. And just even have, you know, I like the head popping out, mm -hmm. you know? But, yeah. But Cause it makes you lower. think. Yeah, no, it's uh reflections. We're surrounded by reflections. They're everywhere. I love them. Well, everything's a reflection for the most part. Um, okay. I mean, in that light has to bounce off of it into our eye in order for us to see it. So it's a reflection. And, you know, looking at an editing on this, I might have like pulled the clouds a little more too. I might have gone a little darker on them just to. More get dramatic, some more you mean? Out of them. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, I would like not it. have replaced them with Luminar. Mm. Yeah, I wonder how I would have done with this. I don't think it could handle something like this. Because there's it no. It does have reflections. I've, I've messed around before. It can, it can, it can do okay. It, it can? Like a flexi of it. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. Don't lean on that crutch, Tim Engel. You're better than that. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I gotta have my crutches, man. Yep. Hey, Nora, I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit your shot here, make it full width like that. It looks better. There we go. All right. And last but not least, I'll do a quick reload. But last but not least is Tampa the Silver. This was late January 2021 at the Okefenokee Swamp from a canoe with my son and my iPhone. All right, Tim Ingle, what do you think? Yeah, I like. I would have, you know, I just would have pulled back the line straight up and down. Mm -hmm. Water is always hard when you have it tilting, for me. Yeah. Um, but the reflections are awesome. Like yeah. you know, it's like it's a gorgeous like spot. Um, this is a this is another one I think that would be interesting to play around with inverted. Yeah, but yeah, of course, what you said, you know, uh, make your vertical lines vertical. Uh, but if you had, if she had rotated this, cropped off, like it, it provided there, there's tree in the reflection, or even if you, when she shot it, it had cropped it differently, so that the yeah. the tops of the trees extend lower into the reflection, and then flipped it and cropped it so that the actual world is cropped off, so that the picture becomes all about reflection and the distortions that the water is making in those reflections. And, you know, of course, play within processing to bring the, you know, pop the contrast and clarity on those trees a little bit. That 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 would be really, really interesting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, this is cool. No, even, you know, and, 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 and add a frame, you know, I'd be curious how a frame is on this. Now I'm thinking about frames. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, see, now you're in, a, in the frame state of mind. Thicker, thicker edge <laughs> on these. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, trap it in there. This is cool. Very cool. Hey, Tabitha, I'm going to do the same thing with yours. I'm going to go ahead and make you full width. There we go. All right, Tim, you have a favorite of all the ones that we've I looked at we have, today? I think Jim's still in there, isn't he? Jim? Did I miss Jim? Oh, hold on. I think he's got, I think he's got one down there. I'm reloading. And yes, yes, look at that. I almost missed it. Thank you. All right, here we go. Cool, thank you. Uh, did you and I think this a... goes into what we just talked. This is kind of what we just talked about, having that kind of like center, the tip, the, mm -hmm. the lines are better. Mm -hmm. um, I like it when there's equal um, reflection to the background, like when it's, you know, maybe he really has it like dead center on it. Yeah. Look at yeah. that lower, that corner. Right. Yeah. You look in these corners, the same amount of space up here, up here and down here. Right. Yeah. 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 Like and that's, you would think, you know, one of those rules in photography when you're shooting landscapes or, or vistas like this is, you know, never bisect the image in half, you know, never cut it in half with your horizon. Um, but again, that's, that's a suggestion. And in, in this case, I think it works because he's clearly going for the yeah. symmetry and the balance of the shot. Right. So it works really yep. well here. So it's a mirror image. A mirror image. It's a reflection. Look at that. This is and, really you cool. know, I want to see about... more of this, though. You know, when I see a shot like this, I feel like I'm not getting enough. Like, I see all this on the side think, here. You know, I want it to go way over here and show me, like, give me the grandeur of this lake. Like the full, like a big pano. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was thinking about Karen's looking at this, too. It's like you said flip it. And, like... You wonder, like, it takes it in a whole new style when you flip this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking in the mirror dimension at that point. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, this is really cool. Very good. I yeah. like it. Yeah, and I get lost in here because I want to be here. But again, I want this at least, I would love to see this at least two thirds longer just to get a feel for the lake and where it is and what's going on and how big it is and all that. I feel like I'm being teased yeah. with this, this shot, but it's good. It's very good. All right. Yeah. I think that's yeah, everybody, Jim. right? Yeah. Jim that's bringing good. the heat. Let's reload this. Make get sure I got everyone. Buzzer, they say. <laughs> yep. So let's see. I think that's everyone. All right. We got a, you got a favorite on your mind? You know, there's a couple I like. Um, 
I don't know, man. It's like it's a tough one. It's like I'm I'm, st- I'm stuck between Phil's and Paulo's. Yeah, I I'd, I'd have to go. They're both great. I would personally go with Phil's. Phil's is great. I mean, this is I mean, it fills the topic. Well, fills the topic. No pun intended, Phil. But it fills the topic uh, of reflections nicely. It's mysterious. I get lost in here. I don't know where I am. Um, it's pleasing to the eye. I like the, the, the lighting on those bricks there. I like what's going on with the reflection on the glass on the right side. It's just an intriguing shot. You know, he did a really good job. A really good job. Yeah, on this no, one. like they're, they're both in the Apollos where you get into the reflection and see the street per, you know, action. And yeah, so I'm, 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 yeah. But I think if I printed one that would be in my wall between the two, I think Phil would win on that. Oh, interesting. Maybe we should add a parameter to these. Like, where's Phil's? Would you print Here it? it? Is. Oh, you mean Phil's would go on the wall or Paolo's would go on the wall? Uh, Phil's would go on the wall, I think, because it's like, it has more of that, like, design. Like, you can design off of that. Like, if you have a design style in your room, mm-hmm. like, that could definitely play off or lead add to it. Yeah. From yeah, a from no, standpoint of colors and tones and things like that. I think that's a good, like, you know, if I'm designing a new Marriott hotel and it's all warm tones, that's going to fit a good spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm a fan. I like it a lot. All right. Well, that's it. That's our critique this week. Now we need to pick a topic for the next critique, which is going to be two weeks from today, which gives us the 20th of March, March 20th for our next critique. Tim, you want to pick a topic for us? Well, but, a... uh, you, you didn't tell me I have to do this. Jeez. Yeah. Let's pull some out. I have but, one uh, in case, in, in case you get too shy and tongue tied. I have one. Um, <laughs> I almost like, like this makes me feel like just they buildings. Do. Cue the Jeopardy music. Buildings, like build, industrial buildings. or urban. No, no, buildings. Why not buildings? buildings. Let them let him interpret it. This is inspired off of Phil's. Okay. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, the the future critiques should be sp- inspired by the winner of the current critique. Um, all right, buildings. It is buildings. Building. For the next critique yep. that's going to be on March twentieth. However you interpret that. Mm-hmm. Buildings. I like it. Okay, we haven't done that one before. All right. Cool. Tim, where where are you at online? If people want to look at your work and see what you're what you're capturing with that oh. Nikon Z nine of yours. Always inglephoto.com is the good place to start with. Um, you know, Instagram inglephoto underscore ink. Yeah, you know, and you're head, you're heading out to WPPI tomorrow, right? So I'm heading out tomorrow for the day. I'm going to meet with Fotex about some of their modifiers and some of their equipment. Um, yeah, so and I've not been to Vegas since before the world ended, so it'll be oh. fun to get back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Vegas has been through a lot. They had the you know all the COVID stuff, and then before that, you remember they had this out. Was it it was it frogs or some sort of some sort of thing locusts <laughs> no australia is the know. frogs and the toads vegas had the 30 year locust or grasshopper plague or something where it was like just well, grasshoppers covered first, everything that's where you and i first met it was yeah was it wppi yep yeah no i remember i wanted to get your autograph and you like pushed me or your security pushed me away you know they're and aggressive. Like, they're they're all aggressive. go away. They're they're all go away, young man. He doesn't have time for you. And I felt yeah. so bad. You turned around and you tossed me a, like a Panasonic towel. You said, "Here, this is for you, kid." <laughs> and some bottled water. <laughs> right. And I said, "Thanks, Frederick." And you came up and rubbed my hair real good. And it was yeah, you're going place, kid. Get out of here. Don't bother me. <laughs> right. All right. Cool, Tim. Thanks for swinging in and doing this. This has been great. Awesome. Yeah, thanks and, for asking me. No, for sure. And, uh, and thanks, everybody, for joining in live and folks that are joining in the replay. Regardless, if you're live or watching the replay, please be sure to like and subscribe to This Week in Photos YouTube channel to 
bring us up in the algorithms. And if you are part of the TWIP community, go ahead and start, get your, your thinking caps on for your building shot, which oh, is, will be part of the live stream on the 20th of March. And we'll dive through everything. So, and with that, thanks everybody. We'll see you, well, well members, we'll see you in a couple days at the Mixer. And Tim, yep. you have a safe flight out to uh, Vegas, Thanks, assuming sir. you're flying and not driving. You're flying, right? Correct. I am flying. Southwest. Okay. Thank you. Oh, good luck. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> Go, at least it's not Spirit. At least it's not yep. Spirit yeah, Airlines, so you may make it. <laughs> yep. You know what? I, I'm clowning on Southwest. They did a great job. I was in uh, Florida just a couple of days ago, and I only had one hitch in my journey. I flew from Oakland to, or OAK to Denver or to Austin and then from Austin to Tampa and then on the return it was from Tampa to uh what is it Denver and then from Denver to Oakland because my flight got canceled for some reason at the last oh. minute yeah but it only it wasn't like these crazy adventures these people have been having you know with Southwest mine was like a three three hour delay so you know not bad. I got to go have lunch with the crew and hang out and then get on my plane. Uh, but we'll leave it right there. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Thank you, Tim Engel, engelphoto.com out of Sacramento. And Tim, have a great time in Las Vegas. Go out there and be good, but not crazy. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. Happy clicking. All right. See you, everybody. See you, guys. All right. Hang on. Ending the stream.